Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, let's see a universal method to rationalize the denominator in the most general form. And this method works for arbitrary n-term case. So let's get started. So we begin with the two-term cases for the denominator. And we just multiply the conjugate part to the numerator and the denominator. So we got here. And note here, when I say conjugate part, this conjugate is not the same conjugate in the complex analysis. And here the conjugate only refers to the square root a plus square root b or square root a minus square root b. So don't be confused. And next, let's see the three-term case. So for the three-term case, we can apply the similar trick by multiplying the conjugate part. But here we put the square root a plus square root b into the parentheses. So we treat it as a two-term case. And then we expand this complete square, so we got here. And next, we multiply the conjugate part again to the numerator and the denominator. So we group them together, and we treat it as a two-term case. And we got here. And you can see this denominator has been rationalized. Now let's see the four-term case. And we will see if our previous method still works or not. And you can click here to see my previous video, where I rationalize the denominator for the four-term case. But that problem is a special case. And now let's go back to this general case. And here we also want to apply the similar trick. So we multiply the conjugate part to the numerator and the denominator. And we got here. And next, we expand this complete square. To save the space, we define k as these blue terms. So we can write it into this way. So you can see there are totally three square root terms in the denominator. When we multiply the conjugate part, we want to reduce the number for the square root terms by one. So we apply this trick again, and we got here. And then we group them, so we treat them as the two-term case, and we got here. Right now, it seems there are only two square root terms in the denominator. And let's see what happens after we expand this complete square. And to save the space, I only show the result for the denominator after the expansion. If you compare it with the previous result before multiplying this conjugate part, you can see there are still three square root terms. So it seems our plan doesn't work. And another thing is, if you look at all this algebra calculation, it's very tedious. So we want to find some patterns and a beautiful way to solve it. So let's go back to this two-term case. To save the space, I only show the denominator here. So for the square root a plus square root b case, we need to multiply the conjugate part, which is square root a minus square root b. And similarly, for the square root a minus square root b case, we need to multiply the conjugate part, which is square root a plus square root b. So you can see there are totally two conjugate terms here square root a plus square root b and square root a minus square root b. So no matter which part you are given, you just multiply the other conjugate part, then you are done for the two-term case. And next, let's see the three-term case. For the three-term case, there are totally four combinations for the conjugate terms, which are plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, and minus, minus. And if we multiply those four conjugate terms, we got here. And you can see all the square root goes away, which means we successfully rationalize the denominator. And let's see an example here. Suppose we want to rationalize this fraction, which is a three-term case. And then we multiply the other three conjugate terms, so we got here. And you can see this denominator has been rationalized. And let's see another example here. Suppose we are given for this fraction for the three-term case. And again, we multiply the other three conjugate terms, so we got here. And if you compare the denominator, you found they are exactly the same. And here, let's summarize this method. Here is a two-term case. There are totally two cases for the combination of signs, which is plus or minus. And this means the total number for the conjugate term is two. And here we list them. And if we multiply them, we got a minus b. Next, let's see the three-term case. 
And here we have totally four cases for the combination of signs, which are plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, and minus, minus. So the total number for the conjugate terms is equal to the 2 times 2, which is 4. And we list these four conjugate terms here. And if we multiply them together, we got here. And then let's see the four-term case. So for the four-term case, there are totally eight possibilities for the combination of signs. And I list them here. And the total number for the conjugate terms is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 and I list them here. And if we multiply them together, we got here. And here is the output from the Wolfram. So you can see here, after we multiply them together, all the square root goes away. And this means the denominator has been rationalized. Finally, let's go back to this summary slide. So what about the arbitrary n-term case? For the arbitrary n-term case, we still follow this combination pattern, and the total number for the conjugate term will be 2 with the power n minus 1. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it.